particular section, we will look at uh, uh, the plant evolution. And plant evolution is a very wide subject. It took place over 300 million years ago. Um, the more the uh, 300 million years ago, uh, the ancestors of the modern plants uh, were small little mosses and teredophytes, as we will talk about them as to what they are. Um, keep in mind the conditions of the earth was very different earlier. There was much uh, more quantity of water, and um, the global climate was different. Uh, the the, the the earth actually became cooler because earlier in the after the big bang there was it was a very hot environment so over time as water changed and the temperature changed um, many different kinds of plants arose um, we use the words bryophyte for the mosses they were the uh, the earliest uh, seedless uh, plants and then came later uh, what we are called as the teredophytes and teredophytes are um, I got messed up with my letters over here. Teredophytes are usually plants that are more like hardstales and they look like small little plants and we will see some of the simple ones that I will show you um, in the pictures later on. Um, these, uh, you see them usually in, uh, uh, they're like the whisk ferns and the hardstales and these are the small little teredophytes. And then came the next generation of plants which were the um, the seedless vascular plant, uh, uh, sorry, then, then came the vascular plants and these were um, the, um, the, the gymnosperms and the gymnosperms are the ones that look like gymnosperms and they are the ones that are um, more conifers and more do in, in certain dominating areas such as higher altitudes and then came the last ones which are called as the angiosperms and these are the modern day flowering plants so we will um, this is just an overview of the of the milestone of the plant uh, evolution so uh, mostly um, what some all of these plants have common is their photo autotrophs Photo means that they depend on light, and auto means they're self, um, they are self-producing troughs are as food. So they actually synthesize their own food, which we know the reason for that is because they have um, chlorophyll in them, so they're able to produce their own foods. So in this next uh, slide, we will now look at the same groups again. But uh, I want you to keep in mind that the earlier plants were mainly uh, the land plants and these um, then gave rise to the vascular plants which are the visqueur and horse tails and these are the teredophyte that I gave you the name earlier. And then we had plants that had more complex leaves and then we had plants that were uh, the seed plants or the modern day flowering plants. So most of these groups are adapted to very dry conditions and often cold, for example, as we know as this particular group is present usually in colder climates. And the reason that some of the plants were able to survive in certain areas was because they had certain modifications that helped them um, survive in certain conditions. Now let's look at the first modification and that is called as the stomatas. Stomatas are actually small little holes or pores that are present on the on the on the back surface of the leaves. So if you can imagine if this was a leaf and this was the back surface of the leaf and this they had small little openings in them. And these openings are mainly for allowing um, um, gases to exchange. So um, carbon dioxide is taken in through these pores and then oxygen is released. However, because these pores are present, um, they can also um, um, make the plant cell dehydrated because it can lose water as well. Now, and because then that's the reason that in, in very dry climate, in very uh, hot areas, for example, Arizona, where most of us live in, uh, a lot of the plants have spikes or spines, and that's a natural process by which uh, they have reduced the stomatas. To avoid uh, the loss of water, um, plants also have a layer of cuticle, which is like a waxy layer and uh, that prevents uh, water loss by these um, stomata or the horse. 
Um, some plants also have lignin. Lignin is um, is a molecule that um, gives strength to the plants. So, for example, the bark of the of the trees um, are full of lignin. And then, lastly, they have a, in a very interesting uh, plumbing system. And this plumbing systems are are of two kinds: xylem and phloem. Xylem uh, vessels usually help allow the water flow of water and phloem is uh, everything else so for example glucose and all other nutrients that the plants may need would be uh, passing through the phloem and because of these uh, the plants are called as the vascular uh, plants because they have the uh, vascular uh, array of uh, of passage of these uh, different um, substances or nutrients um, there is also something unique in the in the in the plants that land plants um, gen, uh, they alternate between two different stages. Uh, one is called as the gametophyte, which is a haploid a stage. Remember, haploid has to do with half the number of chromosome, and sporophyte, which is the 2n or twice the number of chromosome. So you will see a lot of this in, the, in, in these plants. For example, um, a plant may be, uh, may be uh, produced by fertilization of uh, the gametes and it would be a 2n plant and then it will go undergo mitosis to, um, to help plant grow into an adult or full-size plant. And then the plant may release uh, spores and these spores are uh, still 2n and the spores then undergo meiosis to uh, form uh, half the number of chromosome and then undergoes another stage which is the the gametophyte stage and in this particular stage it may have uh, for example a male part or a female part and then uh, eggs and sperms are produced and then it goes back now this is a very unusual cycle we, um, humans and animals don't undergo this uh, kind of cycle so they have a sporophyte cycles in which they produce spores and a gametophyte cycle and over the years um, in the earlier plants, you will see the gametophyte is more prominent, which means that uh, one plant is going to be more a male plants and one's going to be a more female plant. And you will see parts of the plants that are more males and females. But over the evolution, the, the modern day flowering plants have a very restricted gametophyte. You don't really see them because they're all inside the, the floral part of the plant. So um, that's the part that has over, um, over generations have evolved. So, um, from, okay, so we got through this slide.